You're watching semi-final 2013. We're about to start getting initial trends. You're seeing some figures for Madhya Pradesh already on our screen where the leads are split between the Congress and the BJP at two apiece. I want to go across to the Insta trackpad and explain for our viewers what to look out for and how to deconstruct these numbers because they'll start pouring in over the next few minutes. So it's important for you to fully understand how this will work so that you're able to uh, get, a gr get a grip on what's happening. Uh, let me take you through how we'll break this up for you. We'll of course have the overall tallies for each of the states that we'll be tracking. You'll see these figures emerge and you'll have figures for leads for the Congress, BJP and the Aam Admi Party for all the 70 seats of Delhi. But we're looking at several issues live. This used to earlier come only in the newspapers the next morning, but now we'll be able to tell you on a real-time basis what is happening, for example, in seats where Rahul Gandhi went out and campaigned in Delhi. Now, there are about 20 seats where his campaign actually took place. We'll also be giving you the strike rate. You see that icon on your screen right now? That's the strike rate icon, which will explain whether or not Rahul Gandhi is a force multiplier for his party or is he actually a liability. Then, as I promised you, we'll be tracking figures for New Delhi. This is where the giant clash takes place between Vijinder Gupta, Sheila Dikshit and Arvind Kejriwal. We'll be looking at figures for New Delhi and we'll be looking at the vote share, live vote share as it emerges from New Delhi. Sheila Dikshit, Vijinder Gupta, Arvind Kejriwal will get initial trends and we'll have those figures out for you. And we're also looking at sitting MLAs and we're going to break down how the sitting MLAs of the Congress, the BJP and the Aam Admi Party in Delhi are doing. Uh, then we're also looking at the region-wise breakup of each of these areas and then as the figures start coming in, you will get a sense of which areas are being dominated by which of the major political parties. Delhi, of course, is not the only state that we're looking at. We've got some trends from Madhya Pradesh. So let me just show you uh, where these trends in Madhya Pradesh are coming from and what the figures in Madhya Pradesh currently are looking like. Because this is the figure that is currently available. The BJP leading on two seats, the Congress leading on uh, two. That's a gain of one. And the others seem to have lost one seat. Four trends out of 230 seats. That's what we have available at this time. We can also try and give you a sense of which regions of Madhya Pradesh these trends are originally coming, initially coming from is just very limited. Those are the pockets where we're getting some initial trends from at this time. So that's broadly how you'll be able to follow through this Insta trackpad. Very exciting, very cutting edge analysis of the figures that are coming out. But I just want to go across uh, to our panelists and get a sense from them, starting with Surjit Bhalla, on what are the key points people should be looking out for as these numbers uh, start turning into a deluge, Professor Bhalla. Well, uh, first of all, very important to remember that these are leads. Uh, but I hope that the electronic system works fast enough that we'll know them. Uh, the second is, I don't know whether you'll be showing turnout. Uh, but that is the... Uh, the voting percentage. Yeah. The voting Vote percentage each start locality coming, of course we will, yeah. but those start coming in after 1 p.m. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, the last point I want to make is that, listen, um, you know, we have concentrated a lot on basically that uh, the performance of these candidates uh, or the, the appeal of these candidates and one of the things that has been constantly coming up is what happened in 2003 versus 2004 and 98 versus 99. We forget that 2008 and 9, 2009 looks of our elections followed exactly the pattern of the 2008. So this is what the exception if you will. Both in Madhya Pradesh, in, in Rajasthan, in Delhi, the Congress did well in 2008 and did well in 2009. So therefore we have, if you will, so what various examples. So what's at is not just uh, the results for this election, it in a sense is a mini general election or a referendum on the UPA in some senses. Would you accept that? I, I think it very definitely is because I don't see in any state local issues having dominated the, the debate. It was all about national issues. And if you look at the speeches of, of you know, Seva Sundara Raju or any of the sort of state leaders, they were raising issues that went beyond the state. So I think it is a mini general election we're looking and at. And that mini general election, Taisin, could show the Congress in very poor light, could be a debilitating blow for the UPA. 
I, I concede the point that the BJP made it about the UPA because they had nothing to speak, speak about in local elections. But if I were to take her point that it is about, uh, it is a mini general election, then this is good news for the Congress because the BJP is wiped out in Eastern India and Southern India. They have no base. So the Congress is the only national party. By numbers, they're going to come back in and UPA. In that <laughs> sense, it will show that there is a Look, <laughs> north and west monsoon for the BJP. And a south and east drought. And a southern east drought for the BJP. Look, even right now, Madhya Pradesh is a neck to neck from, uh, I've got the Congress tracker, so it's a neck to neck. So even if the BJP were to win Madhya Pradesh and uh, Chhattisgarh is neck to neck. The Congress is not giving up in North India, but is winning South India and East India. So by virtue of numbers, the Congress is back. Which state of South India? Yeah, India. Yeah, yeah. 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 Most of the Congress, they are trying for Yadurappa. And Tamil Nadu goes for the Modi. Modi is quoting Yadurappa. Tamil Nadu, they have tied up. They will go with the DMK and with uh, the third party. And you know, it's it's a then fight. Then Andhra Pradesh, so Telangana comes. comes. Look, the BJP, wherever Congress loses in South India or in East India, it loses to the allies of the BJP. It doesn't lose to the BJP. But wherever the BJP loses, it loses to the Congress. That's the advantage numbers the Congress has. And in, in that sense, India, not including by about 12 o'clock, but if, if they have the an exit polls with, uh, hold, we yeah. uh, the Congress could be mortally wounded uh, through these results. I think yeah, if the exit polls are correct, two things will happen. You can make these arguments about whether these reflect accurately what will happen in the election, in the general election, till the cows come home. But two things are clear. One is if the BJP does very well, Narendra Modi is going to look like a very viable Prime Minister candidate. It will be much harder to stop this juggernaut if it is at all possible to stop it. And B, the Congress, which is already downcast, it will have a very debilitating effect on the morale of Congress workers because they're beginning to look more and more like losers. Because the BJP will say that Manmohan Singh has been been rejected by people, parliament must be dissolved and early elections must be called Shri Vishwanath. See, I think it's a, going to be a period of excitement for BJP, but I think that's where it might make mistakes in making the transition from the regional to the national. I think one has to be careful because this we are still arguing in terms of leads, which is in kind of suspended time. But right now, yes, if I were a speculator, I'd bet on the BJP. Yeah, the Sattah market is betting on the BJP yeah. big time. I want to go across to Maruk in the political desk and get a sense of what our pundits are making of the initial trends which show the Congress neck and neck in Madhya Pradesh with the BJP, Maruk. Right, let's first uh, quickly get uh, the first trends are coming in. Uh, we're also getting some information on the social media. Uh, but a uh, quick round, uh, uh, starting with you, Javed, the initial trends from Madhya Pradesh, especially that one lead for the Congress party, that plus one. Look, to Congress, any good news will be, very, will be very good for Congress party at this stage because they're so down and out to begin with. Madhya Pradesh, yes, a lot of credit will have to go to the young man, uh, Jyotir Aditya Sindhya. As it is, there's been speculation that perhaps Congress got it wrong. They ought to have put him in charge much earlier, perhaps a, a year ago. He just had two months to get his act together. So whatever Cong whatever gains Congress party makes there will be to the credit of Jyotir Aditya. Not, not entirely. I must say, Javed, I must also say there's Kamal Nath. There are people, old war horses Look, of Kamal elections. Nath, they, Nine saying, elections. Um, the, all the yeah. things were there from the very beginning. You have to give credit where it is due. This young man has you know, uh, put some fire into I'm, the Congress I'm Act. There. Some fire. I'm only saying that in addition to that, there are these old people who have a base and they might have also... Uh, been part of delivering, but just now you have 8 12. So I don't think con Congress can celebrate too much. Your leads are showing 12 for BJP and 8 for the Congress in Madhya Pradesh. 12 for so BJP, 8 for Congress. See, I actually think at this point it's too early to say. Mm -hmm. I mean, this 12-8 this could change. I don't think you can sort of really extrapolate from this. There's nothing that we see so far to lead me to, to doubt the exit polls. Okay. You've got 12-8. Too got early, you're saying. It's, well, the BJP is leading 12-8. Uh, and it's very early, so there's nothing. There's no evidence so far for us to suggest to suggest that it's going to be any different from what we believe from the exit polls. Well, Rahul Kamal, we have an extremely skeptical political desk here. They're not very impressed with the fact that the Congress has got about eight, eight leads, as far as the uh, latest trends are concerned. Back to you. Thanks, Maruk. Uh, we've got some trends coming in, so I want Professor Surjit Balla to just walk with me to the Insta trackpad as we look most crucially at Madhya Pradesh where we've got trends of about 20 seats. Let me take you through those figures for Madhya Pradesh first. We look at the overall picture because I think that's pretty much all that we can currently look at. And Professor Bhalla, yeah. uh, the BJP currently leading in 13 seats, the Congress leading in eight, that's a gain of four. What do you make of the initial numbers and also pull out the yeah. areas of Madhya yeah, Pradesh would be where these trends are coming from? Again, the caveat has to be that this is very early. There are only 21 seats so far. Um, and, you know, what we should have also is the, the, these are the leads, but where are they 
if you will, are they gaining or not? Did they already win this seat before or not? But given this, it's two to one. Yeah, so, we've also got uh, some figures coming yeah. in for Chhattisgarh. Let's yeah. put those figures out on the screen for our viewers as well. Uh, the tally for Chhattisgarh, which again shows the BJP uh, in a very strong put position to begin with because the BJP is leading on nine, the Congress on three, but they're holding on to the seats that they have yeah. at present. Yeah, you know, again, <clears throat> these are very early, but if you will, Chhattisgarh, as we had discussed several times before, is a real test case of opinion polls um, and, if you will, economic performance. Um, in the opinion polls have, and the exit polls have Chhattisgarh a very, very close race. Uh, whereas, if you will, uh, the economic performance of uh, Raman Singh has been quite, quite good. Okay. Come, so, we'll come back yeah, in just a yeah. moment. Sudanshu Mittal from the BJP is also joining us, does a lot of polling for the BJP. I would have thought that the initial results, initial trends will start coming in from Delhi. We haven't seen much from Delhi so far. It's actually Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh where the initial trends are coming from. What do you make of what we're seeing so far, Sudanshu? You are a big smile on your face. You are very happy. <laughs> I, where are the laddus? I, I, sh I should be happy because all what is being told and what is being seen right now is what we believe is going to happen. We are winning all the four states is what we believe. I wouldn't like to be going overboard on that and saying this, this, this. Two hours and down the line we'll know that. But it seems what is being anticipated is coming out to be true. And there are reasons. There are reasons because you know you, you must analyze these polls at two levels. One is the national level, one is the state level. State level in Madhya Pradesh and in Chhattisgarh we had very competent leadership. They are they are chief ministers who have delivered actually. One is called the Chawal Baba, one is called, called the Mama, because they have a personal rapport with the people of the state, unlike some other chief ministers. On the contrary, when it comes to Rajasthan, we've had a late swing by Mr. Gelot because for four and a half years he was in hibernation and suddenly he woke up and thought, last six months can do wonders, but it doesn't happen this way. There is consistency required. Delhi has had an overdose of uh, the Congress government and uh, I guess the lethargy, the corruption... No, but the what is this overdose? Over the Congress government... No, 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 So why, what explains the fact that there is a high level of frustration, Professor Bhalla, with the Sheila Dikshit government, but that level of frustration doesn't exist with Raman Singh and with Madhya Pradesh. Is that because of the central government? Anti-incumbency of the center combined with the anti-incumbency of the state. You see, it's these two things put together that we are going to be on no, the winning side. We still have to explain yeah. the following right. that we can't have it both ways that listen if it works over here it was anti-incumbency at the center if it works there if it's, it's pro-incumbency for the state. Look there are parallel forces there's clearly not clearly one should be a bit careful that anti-incumbency at the center is a prominent feature this time. Absolutely. It wasn't, if you will, in 2009. Absolutely. There was pro-incumbency at the center. So we can't really take anti-incumbency on its own merits as a phenomenon anymore. It used to be the case all times. Now it is, I think, more and more, as the several chief ministers have emphasized, it's performance that matters. Absolutely. Rather than, am I incumbent, am I not an incumbent? And therefore, I think, let's look at this, because what you're having is that, according to the exit polls, the, the two incumbent uh, uh, Congress BJP states ministers. are losing, and the two incumbent BJP states are winning. So Absolutely. I don't think incumbency is a factor that... Okay, I want to now focus this discussion on what's at stake for the principal players. And we'll start with Rahul Gandhi, with Vir Sangvi, because if the Congress were to be routed, would it at some level be a reflection of Rahul Gandhi's election management skills? He's picked the candidates, he's driven the strategy. Will he have to take a large part of the blame as well? I don't think there's any doubt about that. And I imagine he will probably take the blame voluntarily. The problem with Rahul Gandhi is not just the electoral management. The problem with Rahul Gandhi is Rahul Gandhi. Nobody is quite sure who Rahul Gandhi is. Nobody's sure what Rahul Gandhi stands for. Does he subscribe to the kind of socialism the left-wing economics his mother subscribes to? Is he more a Manmohan Singh kind of guy? Does he want to be associated with the successes and failures of this government? Is he presenting himself as an alternative? There are no clear 
answers to all of these questions. But Tavleen Singh, with just think... months to go for the elections, these are questions that people really now need to know the answers Absolutely. to. I disagree with you. I think that he's made it very clear during this election campaign what he does stand for. He stands for <coughs> welfare, politics, you know. He keeps saying that I'm with the he poor. He doesn't. He I'm said with in a no, no, meeting no, with no, a group no, of editors clearly. that he's very liberal in his economic okay. views. He's that not he wants liberal at all. He says, yeah. he yeah. I'm wants with, economic I'm for the growth. Poor. He wants private investment. He said no, so in no, 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 he, 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 he has always said, I, the BJP is the party of the rich. And we are the party of the poor and the tribal. No, but that's the problem. One second, one second. That's the problem. He, second. Second. he says second. a different thing in he private said, because I was in that yeah, conversation. Not in private. I heard so not in said, private. But let's but go then, by the campaign. No, no, no. Yeah. Singh let's says go by the campaign. that you have to look at what he says in public, and that's more important. And, 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 no, no, Rahul, and that's not true. Just one second. He had a rally for FDI. He had a rally in Delhi for FDI. He's publicly backed the nuclear deal. I think this is a perception. The last time I checked, the last time I checked, giving food to the hungry people is not called socialism. It's called being you. It's called humanity. No, no, no. One second. So if it's he stands no, no, on humanity, no, the minute. food and the food which is the poor, yes. which is why, is which is why you're bringing in one technology, no, no, this is why you're bringing in technology, which one Rahul Gandhi is piling. Yeah. We, we can so have this discussion. Just, yeah. just one, 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 No, no, please, I really want to say sure, something, yes. yeah? yeah? Because it's very important what you yes. just said. There are two ways of looking at bringing prosperity to a country. Either you give them dole, free food, etc., or you spend on roads, Hospitals, schools, drinking water. Have no, one second. One second. Have, have you checked? No, no, one second. Have you checked? If you have the youngest country in the nation malnourished, what is the economical loss to the country? Whose the food fault security is it? bill, the 50,000 crores by itself, it's will bring in revenue, will bring in a 1% GDP growth because you're going to have young what? Indians who are going to be healthy. You have oh a work, when you have a workforce, when you have a workforce, when you have a workforce which is healthy, and I think that is called being human, I think that's called taking India forward. Can I just one can I, can I just let's do one by one. Yeah, if everybody speaks together, sorry. we have a fish let's market. Let's do one by one. Sorry, if you I go, can get out to moderate sorry. this discussion, yeah, please. Sorry. Peace. You go ahead. Just, just, just one second, Siddhartha. Please listen to me because we'll have a fish yeah. market. Sure, sure. That happens on the other channels. We don't like it. Yeah, yeah. Really. We want a conversation which makes sense, which our viewers can understand and benefit from. You're right. So, Jeet Bhalla wants to respond to this. Yeah. So, I mean, he made several points that are sort of beyond the ballpark. Uh, maybe with their Jupiter escape velocity, uh, they have disappeared from my if you will, um, imagination even. Look, he brought in about the food security bill and brought in the point that, listen, Rahul Gandhi is human, that the Congress party stands for humanity, yes. and whereas the other people obviously are inhuman because we don't want to give food to the poor. The critical thing to remember about the PDS system, which is how the food is delivered to the poor by the Congress party, is that, listen, 50% of the food, and you guys, and I want to congratulate you, had a very good sting operation on this. 50% of the food, this is, you know, 25 million metric tons. You know, this is reckoning. If you would have read the food security bill, it food talks about listen, it talks about reforming the PDA listen, system listen, through smart technology. Listen, if only you would have taken okay. the courtesy of reading it. Listen, listen, I'll let me finish, then you come okay. in. Otherwise, you know, but you're making facts which are wrong. Of course, it will it will escape oh. your imagination okay. because you're not speaking what is grounded. Can okay, I, I will say that I have spent ten years. I'm looking at the food security bill at least, but Mr. Punawala has just looked at the bill and I, 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 I defer to you. I defer to you. I defer to you. I have the floor. Yes, yes. yes. We are discussing food security bill, which is not what we were discussing. We're discussing yeah. Rahul Gandhi. Yeah. We are discussing what does Rahul Gandhi stand yeah. for. Yeah. My perception is that he stands for not being in politics. Exactly. Look, there are two things which are required for politics. A dream in the eye and fire in the belly. All of you I ask, swear, does anybody believe that he has fire in his belly? Does I said that last time actually, that, that he doesn't. Good. <laughs> and do you all believe that he has this dream in his eye? Look, I've been in politics for 30, 35 years now. The kind of passion with which we've been here. He's a prince. We, just, 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 we've all had, He's a prince. We are, we've all had alternate uh, opportunities. You know, that as, as the uh, physiology goes, opportunity cost is always there. We chose politics because we believed that that's where we will find an expression. Okay, put, let me put that yeah, question. Is this, is this just one second. For Rahul. I want to put that question to Javed Ansari. Tracks the Congress, tracks Rahul Gandhi very, very closely. And that Javed, as you know fully well, will be a big problem 
for Rahul Gandhi and for the Congress party. There are several in the Congress already who are not sure whether he's the best man to lead them. They, in private conversations, are voicing their concerns about his leadership style. Now, those are real problems for Rahul Gandhi to deal with ahead of this big general election in terms of keeping his troops together and getting them to believe in the General Javid. Well, indeed it is, and there is no denying the fact that the Congress party and Mr. Rahul Gandhi in particular have a mountain to climb. But the problem with the Congress party, Rahul, you know it and most people who know Congress party know it is that they will say one thing in private, but in, in public they will continue to back the leader. For better or for worse, they've decided that at least till the next general elections, Rahul Gandhi will be the leader if they are drubbed in the, in the 2014 elections, which appears likely at this stage, then perhaps they might be some rethink. Perhaps some of them might muster up courage and begin talking about it. But I don't see between now and the 2014 general election some kind of a reward or even, or even for the Congress party to do a rethink. I don't think that's possible. Arun Jaitley took a pot shot where he said after the assembly election results come out, Shri Vishwanathan, we'll see uh, leaders in the Congress say that Priyanka Gandhi must be brought in as well. He's sort of preempting that and laying out a bait for the Congress. Now, People will mock Rahul Gandhi, his uh, political lifestyle, the fact that he goes away for long periods, the fact that he doesn't seem to have hunger in the belly. Those are real issues for a man who's asking India to vote for him. See, I think you've got to be fair to Rahul Gandhi. He's a hangover from the past. He's a set of mnemonics. I think what you have to understand <laughs> to a certain extent is he is actually being a ventriloquist dummy. I would actually be more interested in Rahul Gandhi personally if he was not interested in politics. I think what we have to realize is the tragedy is that the Congress wants in politics a man who has no sense of politics. Rahul Gandhi is an enigma wrapped around vacuum. Politics. Enigma <laughs> wrapped around <laughs> vacuum. <laughs> and no, this no, no, is very, very dangerous, dangerous for the country's biggest party and the man who hopes to lead this party. Enigma no, wrapped because, around vacuum. How yeah. bad and damning can it because be? Because he has to make statements which he hasn't made. I, I, actually, I agree with nearly everything that's been said. I just want to give you two words. Sonia Gandhi. When Sonia Gandhi entered politics, she had no fire in the belly, she had no gleam in her eye, she was up against Vajpayee, she beat him. The second time when she went into election, she had no fire in her belly, she used to read speeches in a lifeless sort of way, she was up against Advani who had fire in his belly and God knows how much ambition in his eye, she beat him. He's so it's, right. not, so it's, not, it's okay. not always that simple in Indian politics. Yes. No, no. Let, let me just come in on that. Let's explain. Let me just come in on that. In 99, when Sonia Gandhi entered politics and she had about a year, to campaign, Congress registered the lowest ever, ever hmm. seat share okay. in their history, 116 seats. Second, 2004, clearly they were neck to neck with Bajpai. I agree with you. And I think that had a lot to do with what happened in Andhra Pradesh. Exactly. One state, YSR, one for the Congress, the Congress knows it. Now let's come to 2009. It's a very open question whether Sonia Gandhi led them into a victory or whether it was Manmohan Singh that led okay. them to victory. Does Let's Manmohan Singh have fire in his it, belly or a gleam in his eye? All, same I, all I'm saying is economic he has a dream. We he had the best. He has a dream. We yeah, had but the you should wake up. No, he's just been dreaming we for the, five years. Let me just finish. Right. You guys okay. right. We had the best growth rate ever. So therefore to attribute 2009 to Sonia Gandhi is completely incorrect. And you conveniently forgot 1999, 116 seats. This was when Casey was put out. And they said, listen, we will win. And 273 seats, remember, that was a bit before the 99 election. Yeah. Okay. She said, very confidently, I, I want to go across to our political seats. desk. So then and I want Maru may have for a moment belly, but she to explain the numbers for Chhattisgarh that we are seeing on our screen right now, Maru. I, I want to answer on 2009. Right. Thanks so much for that, uh, Rahul. And uh, when we're talking about Chhattisgarh, we're talking about nearly 76% voter turnout. Let's first look at uh, the tally that's coming in right now, the trends that we are seeing. Uh, clearly at this point, uh, the, uh, these are of course uh, the previous results of uh, 2003 and 2008 as far as the vote share is concerned for the BJP at 40.33%. Even going by the trends that are coming at this uh, point, leads 10 for the BJP and 5 for the Congress. But that's the vote share on your 
your screens at this point uh, for the BJP in 2008. Is that going to be better this time around? Well, it's been an unprecedented 76% voter turnout. So we're going to see what the vote share is going to be. That might come in later on in the day. Also, looking at the Congress party there. Uh, the other thing that we are looking at is, that's, that's the latest tally coming in. For the Congress party, it seems to be plus one. And uh, for the others, really, the count isn't coming in. And for the BJP, it seems to be plus one as well. Quick round from our political desk, Javed. Chhattisgarh, isn't Chhattisgarh, out of all these four states, more about local issues than really the national picture? Well, I would believe so. But having said that, the, tr the trends indicate that, it, you know, the 50 percent, uh, the BJP, which is, which is leading, BJP is leading in 10, the Congress in, in five. So they that. Uh, you know, they're, they're far ahead and it appears unlikely to change. This was supposed to be the closest contest. And if this is uh, the best that the Congress is able to do in a state like Chhattisgarh, where there was so much anti-incumbency, that the massacre happened, there was a lot of uh, people had a lot of grievances in the manner in which uh, Mr. Raman Singh handled that issue. But if this is the best that Congress can come up there against, then there's very little hope elsewhere. Uh, uh, Sadhanand, also, um, uh, do comment on uh, this whole Naxal threat that has always been looked at when you talk about Chhattisgarh. Has Raman Singh been able to kind of let go of that, take care of it, as many would say? I mean, the one caveat, if these, are, if these trends hold, then the polls are wrong and the BJP is heading for a thumping victory in Chhattisgarh. But what we don't know, what I don't know, is which parts of Chhattisgarh this is coming from. Are, these, are we seeing these trends from traditional BJP strongholds? Are we seeing these we, trends? We, we should be getting so that's that the information. Thing. But if you look at your overall thing, if you look at all four states right now, mm -hmm. the BJP is headed for victory in all four, including Delhi, with a simple majority of its own. And that's quite striking if these trends hold. Uh, I would say the BJP is on a canter, if not a gallop. Uh, in all the four states it appears but just going back to 2009 I would say that uh, the, that victory was attributed to Manmohan Singh mm -hmm. he was he was the face very much and they said that it was his policies it was the nuclear deal nuclear deal etc and 2004 was a surprise uh, for uh, the Congress party itself it was but extremely who would, who would you give that credit because Manmohan Singh was nowhere on the scene then then Let's get the credit to the Congress party, to the Congress leadership, to all of them together. But to the, by but 2009, to two th to, well, why not to Sonia Gandhi? Definitely. No, no, I mean, let, listen, let, you know, let I would say 2009, 2009, one second, let me just finish. No, no, we'll, when, we'll when carry on defeated, with that discussion when as well. Defeated, but for our viewers, we need to understand Chhattisgarh as well. No, that's not true. That's not true. What do we have to do with them? I think that the basic thing is that whoever is leading well, and at that time, in 2009, since it was mentioned, we were told it was Dr. Manmohan Singh's victory. Also, now because it's back, back to, back to today, back to today, it's a gallop. I would say not even a canter now. Chhattisgarh, uh, Chhattisgarh is yeah, ten for the ten BJP five. right now. Leads and if you're looking at Congress the, five. Rajasthan, look at it. It's ten three from what I can see, which is really extraordinary. Yeah. Delhi, Delhi is no longer a mystery. I don't think it appears to be with uh, six for BJP and two and five or four. Two and four for the okay. Congress. Uh, but we we're, we're talking about Chhattisgarh right now here at the political yeah, desk. And quickly to look at the key seats, the seats to watch out for in the state. We have the early leads coming on. The BJP clearly has a lead as far as the state of Chhattisgarh is concerned. Remember, Raman Singh is most likely, as all opinion and exit polls are saying, is likely to make a comeback. Let's look at the key constituencies, the key fights that we are looking at in the state of Chhattisgarh, starting with Dantewada. Srimati Devti, Devti Karma, she's the wife of the slain leader Mahindra Kumar versus Chandan of the BJP. That's the first key contest that we are looking at in Chhattisgarh, coming up on your screens in just a bit. We're going to see that. That has been one of the key contests that we are looking at uh, in uh, Chhattisgarh. Also, one of the others that we are talking about is Rajnandgaon, where Raman Singh, uh, the incumbent, obviously, uh, versus Alka Mudliar, that is going to be the other key contest. We'll get to those key contests in just a bit. Uh, but in the meantime, we're also looking at the social media. And remember, this election has also been about campaigning on social media. Ruchika, my colleague, is giving us the latest. Ruchika. 
Well, you know, you're now tracking trends here, Maruka, and our viewers can watch the trends that are just coming in from all four states as counting has begun. But before that, we've been tracking trends on Twitter, social networking websites that have been abuzz because uh, there has been so much talk about how social media uh, can sway elections, election results. So we are going to see today how all of this is instantly analyzed on Twitter. But before that, let me just tell our viewers how during this election we've seen political leaders from all states, particularly from the BJP, who have uh, shared their pictures, their campaign details, taking pot shots at their opponents. All of it has been a buzz on social media. Ashok Gehlot doesn't have an account of his own, but there is, uh, there are, there is a fan club of his. This is the official page of the chief minister. He, of course, had been getting us, uh, giving uh, his reactions. Then the Aam Aadmi Party. Well, a word in here for the Aam Aadmi Party, which has had a very, very vibrant online campaign. Well, be it Kumar Vishwas, Arvind Kejriwal himself, or other leaders from the party who have been extremely active. In fact, in the run-up to Delhi elections, we saw how there were several trends uh, which had the Aam Aadmi Party leading or sweeping elections, and they, in fact, trended for a good three to four days as Delhi went in for polls. Then, of course, leaders like Shivrat Singh Chauhan, who too have been very active, and Narendra Modi, of course, who has uh, been one of the pioneers, to say, uh, as far as political leaders are concerned. So clearly, we'll be following all these accounts and getting you the very latest. Just a quick word here that you can follow uh, the Twitter feed and all the latest live results on headlines today. You just have to add uh, uh, hashtag semifinals 2013, and we'll be playing out your tweets live. Maruk, back to you. Thanks so much for that, Ruchika. It is a hashtag semi-final 2013. Send in all your tweets, what you think of the election result as well as our coverage here. We were talking about Chhattisgarh here at the political desk. And quickly to give you a sense of uh, the key constituencies that we are talking about. Remember, this is going to be a very interesting contest because as far as the BJP is concerned, they've pretty much said it's a win-win for them. But the Congress is still hopeful. The early trends in, but let's look at the key uh, fights that we are talking about. Like we said, first of all, Dante Vara, Shrimati Devti Karma, wife of the slain leader, remember, Mahindra Karma versus Chandan of the BJP. The other one is Rajnand Gaon, where of course the incumbent Chief Minister Raman Singh versus Alka Mudlayar of the Congress Party. The other key constituency that we are looking at, the key fight in Chhattisgarh is Durg City where we have Hemcham Yadav versus Arun Vora, who's the son of Motilal Vora from the Congress Party. And the fourth key constituency is Kota Renu Jogi, wife of Ajit Jogi, versus uh, Kanshi Ram Sahu of the BJP. And of course, uh, from uh, Marwahi, there is Amit Jogi versus Samira Paikra of the BJP. That's the big co key contest that we are looking at uh, as far as Chhattisgarh, uh, Chhattisgarh is concerned. And just to look at the key trends also at this point, the leads that the BJP has 10 in uh, Chhattisgarh, Congress has 5. Rajasthan Congress has 7, BJP has 17 and also interestingly in Delhi the Aam Aadmi Party as we are looking at has a lead of about 4 seats. That's from the political desk. Back to you Rahul. Uh, thank you very much Maruk. If I can get Veer Sangwi to come with me to the Insta trackpad and let's take our viewers through the numbers and we've got some figures coming in now for Delhi so we'll focus on that in a big way with our panelists because this is the one election the one fight which everyone is watching most keenly. So let's look at the figures for Delhi. Uh, what we're seeing in Delhi is the BJP so far uh, picking up a, a large number of the initial leads that are coming out because the BJP is currently leading on 10 seats, uh, the Aam Aadmi Party is leading on 5 and it seems to be neck and neck between, uh, the, BJ between the Congress and the Aam Aadmi Party for number 2. Okay, and also we're seeing figures for uh, the AAP factor. I'm, I'm told that in New Delhi, it is Arvind Kejriwal who's trailing to Sheila Dixit okay. in the initial trends that are coming out. What do you make of the figures uh, that are out on the screen right now? There you go. Well, the Congress at 5, down 13. The BJP at 10, that's a lead of 5. The Aam Aadmi Party at 5. Well, I think clearly the Aam Aadmi Party has heard the Congress much more than the Congress realized. It looks like the Congress is going to have to fight for second place. And all those people who said the Aam Aadmi, GVL Narsmara was here, who said the Aam Aadmi Party will peak at six or seven, are going to be wrong. The Aam Aadmi Party is going to do very well. Okay, let's take a look at some of the regions of Delhi from which these numbers are emerging at this time. And if you look at the regions of Delhi from where these figures are coming out, it would seem as if this is a battle where the BJP is leading 
and it is the Aam Aadmi Party and the Congress that are fighting for two and three. Yeah. And if the Congress were to end up at number three, that would be a deadly blow for the morale of the Congress also. Be. And a signal for how the Congress is perceived in the capital of India by the residents of the capital of India. People who voted for the Congress three elections in a row, who voted for it twice in the general election, have now turned their backs so completely on the Congress. What could be a greater repudiation? You know, Delhi is considered a microcosm of India. Yeah. Would this poll result reflect a larger anger building up against the Congress party? I think all the poll results are going to reflect an anger against the misgovernance of the, of the Manmohan Singh government. The fact that in the latter part, latter part of his term, he's turned into Narasimha Rao, a do-nothing prime minister who sits behind while corruption scandals go all around him. I think there's also anger that Rahul is failed to be an alternative, failed to tell us what he stands for. It's a very bleak picture for the Congress. Okay, let's take a look after this for the figures for Madhya Pradesh because in Madhya Pradesh we're seeing initial trends which seem to be favoring uh, the Bharatiya Janata Party and if we speak for uh, the campaign that was run by Jyoti Raditya Sindhya, he actually is from the Congress's perspective one of the big gainers. The mm. fact that he ran a campaign that inspired people, trust people came out to listen to the young man. He seems to be, in this possible defeat, one of the victors for the Congress. I think it's a win-win situation for him. As you know, he's been asking to go back to Madhya Pradesh for two years, three years, asking people to revive the party. They sent him back too late. They didn't expect him to win this election. They said, prepare the ground for the parliamentary election. He's doing that. Whether that will work, I don't know. But certainly, he's emerged as the greatest leader of the Congress in Madhya Pradesh. We're getting some reaction from okay. various political parties. Uh, Prakash Javlekar and Jay Prakash Nadda are speaking at this time. Just for a moment, let's listen to what they're saying on the initial trends that we are getting this morning. Congress <laughs> और यही रिजल्ट आएगा यही उम्मीद है वी आर कॉन्फिडेंट दैट वी विल विन ऑल द फोर स्टेट्स टुडे व्हिच आर द काउंटिंग ऑफ व्हिच इज ऑन टुडे एंड बिकॉज़ पीपल आर एंग्री अगेंस्ट कांग्रेस एंड पीपल आर वोटिंग फॉर बीजेपी पॉजिटिवली एंड देयरफॉर वी आर जो के नतीजे आ रहे हैं जो ट्रेंड मैं देख रहा हूं और जो मैं घूम करके आया हूं मुझे पूरा विश्वास है कि चारों राज्यों में भारतीय जनता पार्टी को स्पष्ट बहुमत मिलेगा और भारतीय जनता पार्टी सरकार बनाएगी। छत्तीसगढ़ में क्या है? कहा जा रहा है कि टाइट है मामला और हो सकता है कि बीजेपी लूट करे। भारतीय जनता पार्टी छत्तीसगढ़ में सरकार बनाने जा रही है रमन सिंह जी के नेतृत्व में और वहां के लोगों का रोजान बड़ा Okay, so the BJP very confident of victory. Let's also take a look at the initial trends that we are getting for Rajasthan because in Rajasthan, again, it seems that the opinion polls and the exit polls are holding and uh, Ashok Gehlot's government, uh, Virsangvi, seems to be on its way out. I know many people in the Congress who campaigned in Rajasthan and they came back and they said it's a cut, utter and complete wipeout. We have no chance in this election. Vasundra's charisma is intact. She's getting huge crowds. Gehlot went into hospital at the beginning of the campaign. He never quite hit his stride. His big calculation was the Jats will vote for me. Shishra Mola, a very old man, was made a minister on the grounds the Jats would vote for them. Shishra Mola also ended up in hospital. It was a campaign that never got off the ground. They're going to be slaughtered. And this is also a larger reflection in a referendum on Ashok Gehlot's welfare schemes. He's literally opened up the exchequer, rolled out the doles. If Ashok Gehlot gets rejected, would that at any level raise question marks on what the Congress is trying to do at the centre? It will, especially because Ashok Gehlot became Chief Minister and then went to sleep. And then just before the elections were due, he woke up and started throwing goodies at people. If he'd woken up two years earlier, three years earlier, it had seemed like a consistent and sustained effort, maybe the welfare schemes would have worked. But you can't do this just before an election and think people are idiots and will vote for you. Because that's, that's been working uh, in the past. It's happened and it's helped in the past, but it's not But really to be helping. fair, things like the people criti like people like Sujit criticize about the Congress, the loan write-off, Narega, etc. But things the Congress did at the beginning out of conviction. It may well be, as Sujit said, misplaced and idiotic conviction, but it was done because they believed. What Ashok did, he did right at the end only to win elections. You know, one of the things that are important in Delhi is that the BSP, and they don't really reflect on those figures, are actually leading on five seats. 
So that's people, very interesting. That's interesting. Nobody talked about that. Right? People try to dismiss the VSP yeah. as a fact of the past. the exit past, poll? When that the Valmiki the... votes were all exactly, been picked up yeah, yeah. by the Aam Aadmi yeah. Party. If the BSP manages to hold on to those leads, uh, that would show the pollsters still have something Absolutely. to think Absolutely. about. Let's just go back right. and get comments from our guest, Tavleen Singh, to start with. On the initial leads that we're seeing so far, the opinion polls and the exit polls seem to be holding for this time. That's quite true, and I was just asking Veer whether they've improved their um, uh, tactics of, of uh, you know, doing them, because you know, it, it, this time they seem to be more accurate than they've ever been, right? <laughs> yes. No, no, no. They, they, and the trends were clear. Yeah. Yeah. The first which, round is postal which, ballots. Which? The first round is postal ballots. Don't read too much into it. Number two, uh, BSP. I don't think can be five seats. The, the optimist of the year award <laughs> has to go to the young Mr. Poonawala. But, but yeah. I don't know. I mean, uh, which polls are we talking about? Which uh, opinion yeah. polls are we talking about? Yeah, that's true. The they range, yeah. The range was so wide yeah. that from yeah. a very keen contested to a complete yeah. wipeout and kinds and kinds. You know, let me just tell you one more thing about the exit polls and the opinion polls. I've had a very, very careful look at it. I've done a lot of it. Most of it is humbug. These, these sample sizes are so small. And given the heterogeneous polity of this country, it is an impossibility to extrapolate. So how do you explain the accuracy? Yeah. This why, yeah. why the right? No, I, 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 I'll, I'll yeah. explain. Yeah. And why are you spending so much money on polls? Yeah. 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 I don't. I, we, when we do it, we do it for the reasons of finding out the issues. We don't do it for the purpose of saying this is a seat we are winning or this is not the seat we are winning. But issues because, are okay. Because yeah, because <laughs> yeah. it gives you a sense of what people are thinking about. It just gives you a sense. I have I have done. Believe me, if I was to, to uh, calculate the number of samples we've done they would surpass anybody mm. and with all those huge samples also you tend to go wrong because the choices of people are determined by a lot of factors which unless you've gone to each polling booth do you imagine we have 11,763 polling booths in Delhi each polling booth has a unique feature about itself the demographic profile of each polling booth is so complex that to extrapolate is an impossibility. Okay, you know what okay, Sujit, I, I want to come what Sujit, Sujit will say is change your poster. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I would say, look, <laughs> this is often made by losers, winners, etc. He's a winner About today. the damning of the opinion polls, you can't. <clears throat> all, basically, when you get your industrial production index, when you get your GDP stuff, everything is done so on samples. I have done, so I have like, done once enough like, samples. Let, so let me just, one, one minute. Uh, Delhi, please realize, I have done samples as, as much as two lakh voters. And it was still wrong. Too lack, and yet we went wrong. That is in not terms of, I tell you, in terms of what? You know, we there are pictures of the Aam Aadmi Party supporters celebrating, celebrating yeah. at their headquarters. Let's just take a look at some of celebrating those. Celebrating the leads. They've opened their, they, they believe they've they opened their account. Opened their account. Opened their no, look at those pictures. 12 leads for the Aam Aadmi Party. This is incredible because you've got the BJP at 15 and Your you've got the Aam wrong Aadmi on Party, yes. uh, Shiv Vishwanathan at 12. If these leads were to hold, <laughs> it's well, massive news that's the the making, then. Yeah, <laughs> So they've taken Congress votes, in fact. Absolutely. Absolutely. See, Absolutely. we used to say, yeah, Neil and I, yes, and I, I spoke, spoke about this. About this. Just, about no, no, this. there's another angle to this. Look, we, we said, Aam Aadmi Party is a vote Katwa party. Why did we say that? There was this Congress vote. Not and vote Katwa, this is game changer. Yeah. Yeah. Allow me to explain. Allow me to explain. <laughs> The anger against Congress yeah. was to get reflected in a vote against the Congress. Now that consolidated vote would have come to BJP. But so I we had actually thought we are going to win as many as what 55 to 60 seats because the anger was so strong. With the Ahmadi party there, this anti-establishment vote was to get divided. Well, they've done... No, but it's not getting divided. Sorry, I'm sorry. 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 Would you have done better in Delhi with your traditional constituency if Vijay had been your chief minister candidate? We, the ifs and buts, Cannot, straight answer, straight uh, so answer. It cannot have a no straight answer because, on this one. because there's so no, no basis, straight answer. Because okay, there's no right. basis. There's no basis to really calculate or evaluate whether this would have been better or that is a big supporter of Vijay Goel. Which yeah, is why I'm asking you. He's not going to concede that Hashwadar has been a difference. So that's Which is why he's waffling. That's a question he'll dodge. Okay, we're seeing. We're seeing. I just want analysts to allow these images to soak in because we're seeing history in the making.
15 seats for the BJP, 14 for the Aam Aadmi Party. If these trends hold, this is the most spectacular political debut Shiv Vishwanathan India has seen in the last several decades, possibly. I like spectacular debuts, but I got a funny feeling numbers are going to create history. Let's wait a bit. Because you know, I like tweets. They give you a sense of leads. The tweets can change the mind. And I got a feeling leads are going to do something. I, I, I think that's it. You know, it's not the logic of numbers that interests me. Let's take something very interesting here. You know, the Aam Aadmi Party actually contributed to BJP victory. The BJP yes. doesn't have the magnanimity to honor. Let me just analyze right. it for you. One, it cut the Congress to pieces. And two, it persuaded the BJP that Harshvardhan is a better candidate. Because you realize something. Harshvardhan's image was better than Vijay Goel as substance. It's the image that won. So don't you want to like that? You want to hear that? As I ask you, I'm asking for approval. Allow me to argument my point. Misleads analysis. No, no, no. We know, we know he's your friend, but he had a very corrupt image in Delhi. And even we've never had an allegation against Vijay. If you say, look, I'm just telling you, allegation. Arm, 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 arm. I'm not even talking about proofs. I'm not saying. But there are proofs against him. Forget it. What are the allegations? I've okay. never had Vijay any Goel is not Forget. the story yeah, this morning. It doesn't matter. Yeah, just Arvind Kejriwal yeah. spoke to journalists a short while ago. I want to get a reaction as we see this jubilation already taking place outside the Aam Aadmi Party headquarters. This is Arvind Kejriwal. BJP wale kar rahe maine sun kaun kar raha hai BJP sir BJP ko kaun kar raha hai lekin log aate hain naam bata rahe hain aapko nahi log aate hain unko aur offer karte hain unko candidates ko lekin kaun hai bhi kaun hai Kevin what have they been offering paisa kar rahe hain paisa offer kar rahe hain position ka offer kar rahe hain isme ghabrane ki baat nahi hai wo sab karenge wo unki rajniti hai Let's go across live to the Aam Aadmi Party headquarters. Joining us from there, my colleague Ankit Tyagi. Ankit, describe to us the atmospherics. Wouldn't people think that this is a bit premature? Wait to see if these numbers actually hold, if these are actual seats or just initial trends. The Aam Aadmi Party seems to be celebrating in anticipation. Well, Rahul, that's what the scene uh, is here. They are extremely happy with the early results. They don't want to wait uh, for the uh, for the actual, uh, uh, you know, these con these leads to con be converted. Every uh, lead that is coming here at the Amadni Party office, you can see just behind me, uh, is being uh, is being uh, you, you know is being taken with a lot of cheer. All these supporters, those who are standing here, are extremely excited. In fact, all of them are uh, believing that this will be the trend. These many seats they will be getting. And right now, according to the trend, it's going neck to neck. Uh, so because of that, all these candidates, are, all these uh, supporters of Arvind Kesiwal are extremely happy. Uh, Arvind Kesiwal, along with Prashant Bhushan and others, is right now on the first floor of uh, their office. And they are uh, closely watching all these trends. The cheer that you can hear behind me, these are uh, super excited uh, uh, supporters of Amadi Party. Those who are receiving each and every day. Kumar Vishwas, you can see on your screens right now. He is uh, showing that victory sign. Very excited, not even waiting. Uh, not even waiting right now for the uh, actual results to come in. As of now, the trends say that Aam Aadmi Party is uh, ahead of the BJP and that is what they are celebrating here at their office. Wow, 18 seats. Stay with me, stay with me. I don't want to lose that moment. 18 leads for the BJP, 17 for the Aam Aadmi Party. This is very, very big. And Shiv Vishwanathan, they turn it into a party. There's so much cynicism in the Congress and the BJP. They have to struggle to pull people out. Yeah. The Aam Aadmi Party turns everything into a party. That's why I love them. I don't care if they're premature. They might run out of laddus by the time the real results come. That's beautiful. <laughs> no, but the fact is, they've A, also been able to give Ankit Tyagi, uh, the others, a big run for their money. Absolutely. And when they're saying that the BJP people have been trying to approach their possible MLAs, is that just posturing from Arvind Kejriwal, the Neta? Or is there some real substance uh, to that charge? Ankit? The BJP, they have solved the BJP. Okay, Anand Kumar from the Aam Aadmi Party is joining us this morning. Oh, wow. uh, Professor Anand Kumar, good morning. We're seeing 17 leads for, I see that lovely smile as well. Great to have you outside Vijay Chak. But isn't this a bit premature? Shouldn't you just hold on to your horses, wait to see if these leads translate into wins and then possibly let the party begin? 
No, I'm smiling because it's a very nice, lovely sun out here and you are having a very positive tone in your voice. And Delhi is really excited to welcome change which is getting reported by you and everybody else in terms of these so-called Rujan or leads. So for us, the great joy will come when we assemble in Ramlila Maidan and pass the Jan Lokpal bill. But I think you're that, getting a bit carried away, sir. <laughs> I don't know whether it's going to come down to that because it's the BJP that's actually leading on 19 seats. Well, you're we still number two we at 17. We so Ram Lila Maidan might have to wait for a while still. We will, we will. I'm glad you left social. Just, just one second. Yes, Professor Kumar. Well, you know, at this point, uh, we are very convinced that the voters have come out with a desire to change. So we are not focusing on BJP as much as on Congress. If you are reporting that Congress is trailing behind in most of the seats, it shows that for last two years, they were getting more and more disconnected with the desires of the people, needs of the people, and people have voted very peacefully, very democratically, but for a determined change. And at this point, Ahmadmi Party only prays that the democratic culture of this country gets better with these results and these parties also get changed internally as far as possible but the system has to change the election process okay Hashwardhan is speaking at this time okay. I want to listen to what the chief ministerial aspirant of the BJP has to say let's take a quick listen in Kitiska Akra Bale Achibat Naholek in Chaliska Akra to Chibat. No, I, I, I have uh, done the routine uh, general thing that I do every day, all the 365 days uh, that I have been doing all my life. The routine uh, prayers to God, nothing special about today. Yet the Marji forces Honeke Bavzudbi, Hamari party co spashed Acha Bahumat Dilime Milega, Logonka Pura Ashirvad Milega. Well, 21 leads for the BJP, 17 for the Ahmadmi Party. Professor Surjit Bhalla wants to comment on the leads that we're seeing so far. Well, you know, just substitute Congress for the Ahmadmi Party, and Ahmadmi Party for Congress, and exactly what the polls were saying. So, in other words, Congress will end up from the leads, if you will, 8 to 10 or 12. The um, Ahmadi Party might end up around 20 and the BJP around 37. And which goes to the earlier point, which came out very strikingly in the exit polls, which Veer has also commented on, that basically, and what we've been discussing, the entire vote seems to have been from Congress to the Ahmadi Party. A big, so it, big is, loss. it is really anti Congress rather than necessarily well, pro Ahmadi those, those voters who, who, and I spoke to we one day before the elections yep. about this, those voters, and this happened in my own gym, uh, all my gym instructors said, you know, we are voting for our had we not had half not been there, we wouldn't have voted for BJP because of you know the the the, the, the image of the BJP. And I told V that I think the ARP is damage is, is damaging Congress. I okay. didn't expect Rahul, the damage to be this big. On the contrary, it is, if it you is. ask any of the Ahmadi supporter, his refrain is, "Upar Modi nije ke driwan." We mm. tried to explain. Yes. You see, that's this is what you're talking That sounds terrible. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, I heard that. That's what you're talking about. What about the honor? I think you should rephrase that. Allow me to speak. Yes. 10 out of 10 people have said that. Yeah, exactly. See, Just be honest. What is the phenomena? <laughs> the phenomena was that in terms of leadership, there was a vacuum in Delhi in terms of an alternative leadership. Which he has filled, which, achha, it's, it's, it's exactly in terms of aspirations, what people look at Modi for is what they thought Mr. Arvind Kejriwal was representing. Okay. And, and I have had a lot of people, Absolutely. even who were traditionally BJP supporters, the who middle said. class, the youth, saying, Upar Modi, Niche. Okay, or let's see what our political guest <laughs> makes of these numbers, Maruk, because we're seeing a very close fight between the BJP and the Aam Aadmi Party with 21 leads for the BJP and 18 for the Aam Aadmi Party, Maruk. Thanks so much uh, for that, Rahul. Uh, like you said, it's celebrations at uh, outside the Ahmadmi Party headquarters. I'm hoping that there's not a very skeptical political desk. But before that, let me quickly tell you what the tally is looking like at this point. As the numbers are coming in clearly for the Ahmadmi Party, that's the story. That's the story this morning at 9 a.m. as the results are, or rather the leads are coming out. 17 for the Aam Aadmi Party. Uh, for the BJP right now, it's at 21. And for the Congress Party, 8. Javed, has the Aam Aadmi Party split the anti-incumbency vote? 
Well, it's not just split. They've taken most of the votes. This is a political earthquake, like my friend here was say, saying us. This is the story of the election. Everybody, and I'd like Dr. Sujit Bhalla to come in. He was amongst those, and all the pollsters, everybody had written off Ahmadni Party. And that day, I remember when the opinion polls were being held, I was on the panel. Mr. Yogen Yadav came on air and he told us, he says, all of you will eat crow and we'll come back on the 8th. I will come back and visit each of, these cha each of the channels and, and I'll have my say. Today, they are the ones who must be laughing. This is a political earthquake. They, whether they form a government or not, you have to hand it to them. They've, they've fired the magic, captured the imagination of the people. And there is also, you know, the other significance is that the, in all the states where, there, where it was a straight BJP versus Congress fight, it's the BJP which has gained. But where there was an option, people have also gone in for that option. So there is something for the BJP also to ponder over in the middle of all these celebrations. Let me, let me get a quick reaction from Surjit Bala. Can't hear a thing. And if you will, the center of gravity of most of the opinion polls and the exit polls was for the Ahmadi party to get around 15. And that's where they are centering around. So I don't think there's any explanation needed either on behalf of the polls or on behalf of myself. Second point, I, well, I can come to the other states. What is interesting in all the three other states, while, while we were sleeping in Delhi, uh, the other three states are also <laughs> counting their votes. And if you will, it's a two to one lead for the BJP. That means the BJP, according to the leads, is, will, will win 66% of the seats, two-thirds of the seats so in all the other three states. Southern and clearly, and I just want to tell our viewers, those are the pictures coming out from outside the Aam Admi Party headquarters. They're celebrating, they're wa waiting anxiously for the results. Clearly, the impact cannot be understated. Actually, I think it can, but it can be overstated. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think there's a tendency of Aam Aadmi supporters to be a little bit over-enthusiastic, and I think that's what we're seeing in the interpretation of this, too. Uh -huh. Aam Aadmi Party is not emerging as the single largest party. There's a five-seat lead that the BJP has over them. For political it's still, it is, it is still an earthquake. Anything over 15 is very significant in what it says about the changing nature of the urban Indian voter. So I'm not taking that away from them. But let's be realistic. At, the, at this point, it doesn't look like they are doing dramatically better than the majority of the polls, which had them at about 15, now they're at about 18. If they go up to their 20s, then there will be a dramatically better performance. But at this stage, it doesn't look like they're forming a government. Though, even if they get anything above 15, it is hugely significant that a party with no history has been able to make such a dent in a place like Delhi. You know, Nalini Singh, many are going to say that Aam Aadmi Party, and in the analysis that's going to follow, especially coming from here, the political desk, and from the election center as well, that is Aam Aadmi Party an urban phenomena? Could this have only happened in, in a Delhi more than other cities? But clearly, the Aam Aadmi Party, those celebration shots, changing the political narrative. Absolutely, changing the political narrative and sounding such a warning bell for both the BJP and the Congress. Because do you hear the word Muslim vote? Uh, JDU came along and started looking for Purvanjali votes in Delhi. Nitish Kumar came and wanted them to vote for JDU. You know, I hope that all that is getting wiped out. In this entire Aam Aadmi Party search, it's a warning bell. And when you're asking whether it's only an urban phenomena, it will spread to the urban areas so quickly, but also to the rural areas, because you know that the rural areas are now so connected because mm -hmm. of migration. The second thing I want to say is that BJP uh, was sub has been supported tremendously by the RSS in this election. Now, uh, you know, we've got, uh, uh, we've got important forces like that uh, uh, in, uh, uh, on the in the election th this time, uh -huh. after 1993, I think this is the first time that RSS really came onto the street. So one should not uh, say that you know, there, there was no support, there was no strength, RSS is finished. It doesn't seem to be finished if you look at um, the, uh, the BJP leads. At the same time, a, an Aam Aadmi Party that said that only transparency. We so have Rita it, Bhavguna yeah. Joshi of the Congress Party. Ms. Bhavgura, you're not looking very happy and clearly the numbers will not be encouraging for the Congress party. What happened? What went wrong? Well, you see, we're an established party and we always honor the, the verdict of the people and we don't get disturbed because, you see, the party believes in working on the ground and doing uh, good work if we are in governance for the uh, people, common people. You know, obviously, what the, the, 
leads that are coming are not very flattering and I feel that Chhattisgarh where we were expecting a very good fight is coming up the right way and Congress could be in a position to constitute or form a government. Delhi, Rita Bahuguna Joshi, Delhi, Delhi we are talking about Delhi. Aam Aadmi Party has coming. taken away your... And certainly... We are talking about Delhi, Aam Aadmi Party has I'm talking about Delhi. Yes, go ahead. Well, let's see, let's see, let the, uh, ultimate, uh, the oh, ultimate figures sorry. come in. But you see, Delhi, we've been there for 15 years, and there was uh, probably a uh, will of the people to uh, experiment with some other party. And BJP, which had put in all its team into Delhi, all its leaders, even Modi ji was contesting Delhi election, because if you see all the posters and the advertisements, it was a huge Modi figure with a small Harshwardhan in a corner.